of the most popular premium dashcam makers has this awesome AI-based dual-channel moto, which can turn out to be the truly awesome cap protection you're actually looking for. GX1000 by FineView is in for a thorough review, and you're right, let's inspect! Hey, welcome! Nice to meet you, I'm Michael on the channel. We expect a lot of cool and interesting tech and today we're going to talk about dash cameras with this model called GX1000. It's actually a two-module dash camera with nicely adjustable front lens depending on the angle of your windshield. And this body has a pretty challenging task coming from a company which obviously leads the market in its domestic market, Korea. Uh, FineView want to convince us that it's really one of the best at its price point and also probably a little bit better than some other alternatives which are more expensive but also supporting 4K because this one ain't but that could turn into a positive side. FineView GX1000 might turn into a trendsetter because this high-end model costs less than the top models by the closest domestic rivals Blackview and Thinkware and even challenges some price-aggressive Chinese brands and at the same time seems to deliver decent quality plus integrating some AI-based features. If you want to slimline the price of the setup by purchasing just the front module, this wouldn't work unfortunately, but find you have other budget-friendly air models in case you're interested. Unboxing experience is above average for a dash camera. You're going to discover a very standard pack for a dash cam. Here's the front unit, wedge-shaped, so although it is bigger than some alternatives, it actually feels more discreet when attached to the windshield. This is the rear unit, I need to highlight the fact that both of these cameras have LEDs and they're going to notify you when they actually record. I think this is particularly important at night because it may repel some people with bad intentions. You get a few basic accessories, including cable holders, spare adhesives, a hard wire kit and the long cable for the rear module. It really is nice that the hardware kit is included. What is missing though is cigarette socket adapter, which most other makers would usually provide. The front unit has pretty nice construction, good choice of materials, the lens is rotatable, there's quick release mechanism as well. I rarely say this, but it is quite an excellent setup for a dash cam without a display, so really well done. Specifications-wise, FineView bring a generously capable car DVR setup. Both the front and the rear units are equipped with Sony Starvis image sensors. The chipset is made by All Winner. There's good optics with 122 degree diagonal field of view. Up to 256 gigabytes micro SD cards supported. There's a super capacitor, AI controls for temperature, motion, and AI damage detection. There's inbuilt Wi-Fi, possibility to review footage and configure the camera via a smartphone app or PC software. Let us leave the technical specs aside for just a little bit and talk about something that we very often tend to ignore, that's the warranty period. Whereas most dash camera makers would provide one or two years, FineView give us three years warranty period for the GX1000, which speaks enough about the quality and the durability expected. In terms of specs, that's pretty solid. I wouldn't say that's a top end from the dash camera world right now, but most of the choices are very smart given the price point. And I really look forward to seeing the footage quality out of the Sony Starvis image sensors on the front and on the rear because they are very good in terms of specs. I do have some concerns about the choice of the chipset inside being all winner chipset and they usually have a lot of noise, but since it promises to provide HDR and also very decent low light performance. Let's try it out, quickly going through the installation and then we're going to discuss about the image quality. If you wonder about the installation, it is one of the trickier moments with the GX1000. Unfortunately, it is not plug and play because you only have the hardware kit option. If you look for a simpler solution, you might want to check for one of the power cell battery packs by Blackbox My Car, which by the way kindly have provided this unit for the review. Link to that you're going to find in the video description area. The rest of the installation is pretty standard. As usual, I'm going to use a screen folio as a layer between the adhesive and the windshield. That's for easy removal later on. 
Make sure to plan well the exact spot where you want the dashcam to be placed, because the last thing you want is something to disturb you while you're driving. Then find discreet ways to install the cable for the rear unit and a path to drive the power cable to your car's fuse box where you're gonna need to discover ACC fuse, constant fuse and a ground bolt. If you don't feel comfortable with this part, get someone to help you. A multimeter can usually save you a lot of time. The rear module installation is quite simple as well and once again the planning phase is essential. For most of the samples, I've kept the default settings, so what you're watching is road footage recorded with FineView GX1000. You're going to be able to see the GPS data and video information in the upper side of the screen. A bit unusual, but a nice idea indeed, because this is the area that we almost never really observe. Good looking footage, crisp, bright, detailed. I have the feeling that there's a bit of noise notable even in daytime which is perhaps a consequence of using the all-winner chipset inside. As you're going to notice, the field of view is not that wide. Being just 122 degrees, that's similar to the field of view of most smartphone ultra-wide cameras. But in return, you're going to notice less distortions in the edges. The camera reacts really well on light intensity changes, and most times it was close to perfect about automatic exposure. Recorded files are in AVI format. This is, by the way, a slightly weird part. Both the front and the rear modules record into one single file container, and the only way to see and export them separated is via a software. You can either use the phone app or the desktop software. The big advantage of having the same image sensor and optics on both of the modules is that they're going to show almost identical quality. And especially for the rear module, often being disregarded by some makers, this is a really nice change. In terms of bitrate, 16 megabits per second, that's relatively high for a 5 megapixel image sensor. There are a few special features to note here, something that FineView call absolute parking mode. It will detect impacts or motion and captures 10 seconds prior to the event and after it. If you've ever needed to review parking events in your life, you will immediately understand how invaluable this feature is. You also have the option for time-lapse during parking mode with 2 frames per second recordings and this is going to let you store weeks worth of footage. Here we have yet another huge advantage over the competition. Parking mode has a battery saving mode and consumes just 0.06 watts. Speaking of the motion detection option, what I totally loved is the fact that FineView GX1000 notices when you wait in the traffic and produces a beep as soon as the car in front of you gets in motion. A great reminder in case you get distracted by something. Additionally, if there's something you need to particularly record, the trigger to do that is just a press of a button away. And one more unique feature that I cannot recall seeing with other dash cams, the on and off switch, so that you can terminate recording without unplugging all the cables. And the other cool feature that is worth mentioning is the announcement of a new hour. I somehow got used to this and I like it. One o'clock. As for the software support, it's rather good, the app looks alright, however, functions are not that many. You have almost no picture tuning settings, not that I usually take advantage of these in case there are such, but mentally it feels better to know that you have more options. There also is no cloud integration, something that the other big Korean brand Blackview builds its marketing strategy around. This is the first FineView dash camera that I'm trying. And this is a test of the microphone quality. Currently driving with around 75 km per hour, so you can let me know how does the integrated microphone feel of the FineView. So, the drawbacks. Footage is pretty good, however not superb, and in my opinion not as good as some other brands, although most of the better ones are also more expensive. Limited amount of configuration options, no cigarette adapter in the kit, no 4K resolution support, but I've never really considered this as a true drawback with dash cameras, and the narrower field of view as compared to other car DVRs. In the end, is this the right dash camera for you? My personal opinion is that the FineView GX1000 right now extracts pretty much the best out of the dash camera market in the early 2023 days and provides 
excellent image quality plus those little tricks like the on and off button, the motion detection when the vehicle in front of you actually starts to move, the adjustable front lens, this single button operation, the Wi-Fi module which is also very easy to turn on and off. So that's pretty much the perfect pact within the given budget and I would say in some ways it even exceeds the expectations, probably even better than some of the Chinese brands which are traditionally very much focused on good pricing. So what do you think? Maybe you can comment down below and let me know how you feel about this GX1000 model by FineView. Would be great to hear from some of you who actually have used some of their products and in case you have some questions you can also ask down there and I'll do my best to respond as soon as I can. If you want to order the camera and here a big thanks to Black Box My Car who were so kind to provide the unit for testing, I'll of course leave a link in the video description down below. Thanks a lot for watching. If that was useful then subscribe for more Cool Tech Inspections. I'm Michael and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!